I was referencing a, a guest. Tucker Carlson had a guest on last night on his program who was defending the practice of uh, genital mutilation, which is a, which is an Islamic practice, but is becoming more common in the United States. And there have been a couple of recent cases. And now you've got liberals who are actually trying to defend that. I, I can, can you imagine if Christians were doing that? What would what would happen? Yeah, I know. Uh, yes, but Bill, the Christians are you know responsible for all of the wars of the last two thousand. I'm so sick and tired of hearing that from people. If you missed my column in the Times News this past week, I pointed out, if anything, Christianity is what civilized the pagan world, and it led eventually to the Age of Enlightenment in Europe, which led to people who created a document called the United States Constitution, which is unlike any other document in the history of the world, and allows all of these yahoos out there to scream and yell about Christianity and the United States and patriotism. And next week's column is a follow-up to that. Carlson had another guest on last night who I first came across the work of a few weeks ago. Katie Hopkins is her name. She's a war veteran. She's from England. She served uh, with, a, with a British unit, and I believe she was in Afghanistan. Now she's writing a column for London's Daily Mail. And a few weeks ago, she wrote a column sounding the alarm about Islam in Europe. And she was just vilified by liberals across the European continent, including J.K. Rowling, who is the writer and uh, the former welfare queen, uh, the writer of the Harry Potter novels, which, of course, are designed to turn young people onto witchcraft versus religious faith. Well, I know there are some people out there, the pagans, who say that is religious faith. 845, Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. We're at 51. Katie Hopkins appearing with Tucker Carlson on the Fox News Channel. There's a new report out of Norway that says, and they've tracked this now for decades, that Muslim immigrants do not assimilate. And in fact, as immigrants and migrants come in in larger and larger numbers, they become more and more distant from the culture that is welcoming them. Take a listen to this conversation. The paper looks at 25 years of labor market data in Norway, and it finds that while they initially get jobs and assimilate into the nation's economy, immigrants from poor countries ultimately become less integrated over time. We've seen this in other countries as well. The longer migrants spend in Norway, the less likely they are to hold jobs and the more likely they are to be dependent upon government welfare. Katie Hopkins is a global columnist for DailyMail.com, and she joins us tonight. Katie, does this surprise you? It doesn't surprise me at all. It's something we've seen here in Britain for a long time. I've always maintained multiculturalism doesn't work, that in fact what we end up with is a nation of ghettos. I think that's true here in the UK. And I think what we see is that migrants arrive, and typically because we now have so many economic migrants who haven't actually suffered war or endured real hardship, that they really want to create a country within a country. They don't see Islam as compatible with Western culture, Western values. So actually, they would rather live alone, separate from our society. Certainly around 23% of British Muslims have said that they would prefer and look to live under Sharia law rather than any laws that we have here. So I certainly feel that when people talk about integration, for me, I always hear the word colonization because I think that's what's happening across Europe as we have opened our arms and our borders and told everyone to come and effectively take over. That's because they are welcoming countries and their governments are welcoming governments. Yeah, that's why that's been happening. Did you hear that figure? She said 23% of Muslims living in Britain would prefer to live under Sharia law. Now, for you liberals listening, 23% is nearly one quarter. That's the number that tell pollsters they'd like to live under Sharia law. How many more don't trust the pollsters, so just give them an answer otherwise, but may actually believe that? Could it be another 25%? And as in, in, in England now, the leading baby names every year are Mohammedan names, you can only assume that this is going to become, well, a greater and greater problem. I know liberals out there say that's not a problem at all. Really? As a liberal, would you like to live under Sharia? You know, I'd like to wear purple to school, and uh, 
Uh, I'm sure all of our Muslim friends out there would understand. We just have to learn to reason with them. Now, Katie Hopkins went on to tell Tucker Carlson there is no effort, no effort by these Western governments to try and assimilate these people. Absolutely. And you would think that, wouldn't you? You'd think we would kind of maybe have some lessons on British values, help individuals integrate by kind of showing them our ways and enabling them to join them. I see the complete opposite happening, actually. I see that we have to bow down uh, to the cultures that come to join us. I believe we spend far too much time tiptoeing around the cultures of the people that choose to join us far too little time standing up for the cultures that have chosen, you know, they've chosen to join. I think we need to stand up for our culture and ask people to integrate into it. But I certainly don't see that happening. I think people, you know, are punished for looking Islamophobic if they try and stand up for British values. And that's why things like having the flag or national flag, um, having the English flag, the George Cross, you know, that scene now is kind of being almost verging on racist, potentially certainly Islamophobic, because we're not then embracing these new cultures that come so, to join us. So, in other words, the, the British flag is now considered racist among a great many of the elites in their own country. It won't be long before they throw the Queen overboard, because, well, golly gee, having a Queen of England who's head of the Anglican Church, that'll be considered racist too as well. And you don't, you don't want to hurt anybody's feelings, obviously. So that'll have to come to an end, and we'll have to... We'll have to turn the chair at Oxford over to uh, to the Islamic clerics because we wouldn't want to hurt their feelings with what we're teaching there. You think about how these universities have gone off the rails, not only in this country, but in other parts of the world where they suppress any conservative or Christian speech, and yet they'll turn over the keys to the, uh, to the faculty lounge to these people who are coming in. And, and again... Logically, does it make any sense? Apparently, to liberals, it does. It's 10 minutes away from 9 o'clock. Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX, and News Radio 1310.com. We're at 52. On our way today, perhaps past 80. And the weather forecast, not quite as hot the next several days, but it looks really, really nice. Lots of sunshine, lots of warmer temperatures. And I uh, just wanted to remind you. Our look at the weather is brought to you by, it's a service of Mountain Home Auto Ranch in Mountain Home. Uh, this comes from the New York Times. Apparently Tucker Carlson having guests like Katie Hopkins on the air is offensive. A television critic by the name of James Panawazak, I guess that's how he pronounces it. Anyway, he might be an immigrant too. He writes, for weeks we heard predictions of a shakeup among President Trump's advisors. Sure enough, the shakeup came. It just turned out to involve his advisors at Fox News. Because Trump makes fun of the New York Times as fake news. <laughs> so he watches Fox. How dare he? How dare he not let us tell him how to run the country? The writer goes on to say, you can just tell this how these people are dripping with envy at the Times. Because nobody knows who James Panawizak or whatever his name is. They don't know who he is, but they sure know Tucker Carlson. He writes... Graced with the prep school diction of a heel from a 1980s college comedy, he's leaned into a smirky, confrontational persona since the days of CNN's crossfire. <laughs> and how many people are watching Tucker Carlson? A year from now, the New York Times won't even be in print. The New York Times built a brand new headquarters in New York City a few years ago to replace the old Times building. Times Square is named after the old building. They've had to turn around and lease out most of those floors to other businesses. Yeah, this is a dying entity. Trump's right when he says it's a dying newspaper. A year from now, Tucker Carlson will have the highest ratings in all of cable news, if not on all of cable TV, and the New York Times will be circling the drain if it already hasn't been flushed. You can just see the jealousy and the rage among these writers. They don't like the idea that someone who isn't a flaming liberal and who's out there saying, oh, we need to teach tolerance and make sure that people don't have to wear pink and blue to school and we can be a welcoming city and we can allow these people to generally mutilate young girls and we'll just have such a wonderful planet if you follow our lead. And anybody who objects to that and says, whoa, they call you names, just like they, they, they called Carlson names. Speaking of name calling, I do not stay up late. The job does not permit it. 
so I miss all of these late-night comics. And I'm not missing anything by missing them, as you might understand. We had a brief discussion about this yesterday. I don't know that this guy who made that rather nasty comment about Donald Trump and Vladimir Putin, Stephen Colbert I'm talking about, that he should necessarily be fired from his job. And I think technically the FCC isn't sure that what he said violates any obscenity rules that they have for broadcast television because it's on so late at night. And the rules late at night are different than those. But you may remember what he said. He, he essentially said uh, that Mr. Trump was performing what's called fellatio on President Putin. Now, if they had said anything like that about a conservative, again, about Barack Obama, the hellstorm right now would be so great that that person wouldn't be able to hold on to a job. I just remember what Rush Limbaugh went through. He called Sandra Fluke a slut. You recall that from a few years ago? Remember, this was the young woman that was the poster girl for birth control. She was telling a congressional committee. Uh, and Limbaugh just simply counted up how often she would be having sex by her testimony and thought it was eight or nine times per day. And he used that phrase. It wasn't very nice. But when I was in high school, uh, that was a line that was used a lot about people who were actually having relations less than she was. And you had people demanding that Premier Radio Network fire Rush Limbaugh, and they were demanding that radio stations take him off the air. Compared to what Stephen Colbert said the other night, Rush Limbaugh was quite tame. Do you remember what Bill Maher over at HBO, and HBO has a different set of standards because... Back in the days when cable TV was first taking off, it did not have the same restrictions that over-the-air broadcasting has. That would be your traditional radio and your traditional broadcast television. CBS is on broadcast TV stations across the country. You pay extra for HBO, so if you want vulgarity in the home, you you pay for that. But this guy was talking, uh, uh, Bill Mahar was talking about Sarah Palin a few years ago, and he referred to her on air as a piece of female anatomy and used a rather vulgar term for it. And again, liberals said, well, yeah, that's because she is. Huh, 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 huh. Because they all know it, because liberalism is a self-evident truth, and all of you conservatives out there, because you don't acknowledge it, you're evil, so it's fair game to call you the name that Bill Maher called Sarah Palin. And it's fair game for the Stephen Colbert to say this about Donald Trump because huh, 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 it's true according to your worldview. And therefore, it's okay to call these people these names. And yet they call me a shock jock? Hello? I never talk that way. I, in my personal life, I don't talk that way. I may have somewhat when I was younger, but... After you have children, you start to realize you have to comport yourself in a different way. 856, Bill Colley with you on Top Story. Colbert speaking on his program last night. In other words, all of his liberal buddies at CBS said, don't worry about it, you've got a job. Folks, if you saw my monologue on Monday, uh, you know that I was a little upset with Donald Trump for insulting a friend of mine. So, at the end of that monologue, I had a few choice insults for the president in return. I don't regret that. He, I believe, I believe he can take care of himself. I have jokes, he has the launch codes. So, it's a fair fight. So while I would do it again, I would change a few words that were cruder than they needed to be. Now, I'm not going to repeat the phrase, but I just want to say, for the record, life is short. And anyone who expresses their love for another person in their own way is, to me, an American hero. And I think we can all agree on that. I hope even the president and I can agree on that. Nothing else but that. (laughs) And for once, for once, the big story today is not Donald Trump. It's why we have Donald Trump, James Comey. Now, I should point out, Stephen Colbert is a graduate of the Chuck Schumer School of Manliness. Yeah, you wouldn't, you wouldn't have any fear if you ran into Colbert and Schumer in a back alley, even if there were two of them. You wouldn't have any fear. This is the same guy who, when Barack Obama has been a guest on his program, 
you could say, did exactly the same thing to Obama that he accuses Donald Trump of doing to Vladimir Putin. 857. Bill Colley with you on Top Story. We have one more hour of the show still ahead. We're at 54, and you're listening to News Radio 1310, KLIX, and News Radio 1310.com. Got a lot to talk about. The, the health care bill is going to a vote today. Uh, the budget bill, uh, bill passed in the House yesterday. It still has a lot of hurdles to clear. A quick note, Raul Labrador, who was on the program with us yesterday, had nothing kind to say about that budget bill, was one of the no votes. But then we expected that, didn't we? 